This is an ABC News special report. Queen Elizabeth II, the legacy, the life. Now reporting, David Muir. Good morning. We're coming on the air this morning for the beginning of what will be the final journey of Queen Elizabeth II, her coffin now at the Palace of Hollywood House in Edinburgh. It is the official residence of the Queen when she is in Scotland, like Buckingham Palace is in London, though we all know she loved Balmoral. A procession will soon make its way through the streets to St. Giles Cathedral. It will be led by the hearse carrying the Queen, following behind King Charles, Princess Anne, Prince Edward, and Prince Andrew all on foot. Queen Camilla and other members of the royal family will follow in cars. Queen Elizabeth will remain at St. Giles Cathedral until tomorrow night. Then she will be taken to London's Buckingham Palace. Just moments ago, newly named King Charles alongside his wife, Queen Camilla, meeting with mourners at the Palace of Hollywood House. Earlier, they met with both Houses of Parliament at Westminster, Parliament expressing their condolences for Queen Elizabeth. On Saturday, the Accession Council officially proclaiming King Charles the reigning monarch of the United Kingdom. He signed an oath to uphold the Church of Scotland. In a remarkable show of the Queen's popularity, the images all weekend long. Thousands of people have flocked to Buckingham Palace to pay their respects. We saw it firsthand before coming back to the U.S. King Charles once again arriving there to meet and shake hands with many of them. The Queen's coffin left her Balmoral Castle on a 175-mile journey through Scotland. Mourners packing city streets and rural roads to say farewell. Farmers lining the route with an honor guard of tractors in a powerful image. The Queen's daughter, Princess Anne, following behind for the entire six-hour drive. As the hearse arrived at the Palace of Hollywood House in Edinburgh, it was met by members of the Royal Regiment of Scotland. Princess Anne showing respect for her mother with a curtsy. A simple gesture, but a profound image seen across the Commonwealth and, of course, the world. Uh, during this period of mourning, one of the other lasting images, of course, Prince William and Princess Kate reuniting with Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan, the two couples paying tribute to the Queen, of course, their grandmother, all together outside Windsor Castle, then meeting with mourners. It was Prince William of Wales, uh, Prince of Wales, who reached out to his brother, Prince Harry asking him if he and Duchess Meghan would like to join them to mourn their grandmother. Pictures, of course, of the two princes together honoring their queen, Queen Elizabeth, their grandmother, commander-in-chief. was an extraordinary sight to see. Our team has lined the route all throughout Scotland and, of course, part of our team also in London at Buckingham Palace this morning. Amy Robach is in Edinburgh, and Amy, it's been an extraordinary sight to see the people of Scotland uh, line up to pay their respects. It certainly has, David. We have been in Edinburgh now for several days, and the anticipation of the Queen's coffin was real, and certainly the King himself arriving just a short while ago here at Edinburgh Airport. And we have watched uh, police presence uh, increase, and people lined the streets yesterday, uh, thousands of them, to see the the Queen's hearse passed them by to just get a glimpse of the coffin. And as we talk to people who came here from around the world, we, we talked to Americans and French and people from all over Europe, not just Scots here, wanting to see history unfold and to pay their respects to a woman who they say showed them strength and courage throughout the years. It's, it's palpable the emotion and the sentiments being felt by the people here in Edinburgh to witness and to pay their final respects to Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, there have been um, uh, quite a few sights to see here and, and people certainly excited and saddened at the same time. It's an interesting moment. Uh, Scotland, of course, uh, has uh, always regarded Queen Elizabeth II as their queen. And there's a lot of questions about how this new king will fit into the role here in this country. But right now, this is a day of mourning. This is a day of honoring the queen. And certainly so many people here waiting to see the pomp and circumstance take place. No question David. about that. Amy, your coverage has been exceptional. I want to bring in royal contributor Robert Jobson in Edinburgh. And Robert, it's almost as though uh, the queen planned this. She had a love of Scotland. Her mother was from Scotland, deep roots uh, there. And we knew Balmoral was her beloved place to have died there and to now have given Scotland an opportunity to pay tribute as well is quite something. Exactly, David. I think that actually that's not unheard of. The fact is she would love being in Balmoral. Her grandfather was the Earl of Strathmore. Her mother was Scottish. So important to her, so important to her. But I think that what wouldn't, wouldn't happen if she'd been somewhere else and passed away, that, that toll 
journey from Balmoral down through Ballater and down to Edinburgh wouldn't have happened. So all the people of Scotland had a real chance to be part of it. And now the coffin is being seen for the first, for the, well, for the first time for the Prince of Wales ahead of the, the procession and the piper is piping a lament. Robert, thank you. Let's take a moment to watch. King Charles watching on. We know the coffin will be taken in procession in that hearse from the Palace of Hollywood House to St. Giles Cathedral now, where it will then rest for 24 hours. You have likely noticed yourself at home that the coffin is draped with the royal standard in Scotland, also dressed with a wreath of flowers. Many of those flowers from Balmoral, white spray roses, chrysanthemums, white heather from Balmoral, rosemary among so many other flowers. The flowers the Queen loved. the Royal Company of Archers surrounding the hearse now. And it's important to remember that at least this part of the journey, none of this would have played out had the Queen uh, not died in her beloved Scotland, where, as Robert pointed out earlier, she has such a deep family history. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.